So hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of AMC's Corner. How are you all doing out there? So it's the end of another long day, but uh, that's not really the point. The point is, when I come in in the morning, I take a walk around the shop and I see what, uh, what we got going on, what we got towed in, what we got dropped off and all that. And this morning I was walking around the lot and I see this thing coming here. It looks like just a normal Pontiac Grand Prix W body pre bailout GM. And I notice it's got cross drilled rotors on it and big alloy, Al uh, what are they? Alcoa forged aluminum wheels from the factory. Now, I thought those at first was something somebody added onto this car. But then I walked around to the back of it and I'm like, well, why would anybody waste the money putting drilled performance brakes on a car like this? And then I see that. Very interesting. And looking around the car, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of, I didn't know they, you could get one of these with a V8. And apparently the GXP is just that. It's a front wheel drive, 5.7 liter or 5.3, I think it's a 5.3 liter. Let me take a look. It's the uh, the LS4 small block Chevy push rod motor, a 5.3, yeah, 5.3 liter, crammed into a W body Pontiac car. Look at that thing. That is a lot of motor crammed into a little little area. Uh, puts out about 303 horsepower according to the uh, official stats on it. Haven't driven it yet, so I can't tell you if that's it or not, if it feels like it. But yeah, kind of a cool setup. I guess if you're really into the, the Grand Prix W body GMs, I believe this is the same platform as like the, uh, oh, correct me if I'm wrong, the, uh, the Lumina and the um, Monte Carlo, you know. And the inside is pretty much just uh, just an uprated performance package interior for the GXP, but I guess they dropped that. It's got the tap shift automatic. Sorry if the light's fading it out a little bit here. It's uh, end of the day. You know, pretty much just a uh, leather interior. Kind of nice, cushy, really supportive seats. And some special GXP badging here and there. It's got different... Uh, Different front and rear bumpers and fascia is a little different. You know, the, the quad exhaust coming out, the, the eight into two into four. And like I said, the big brakes, the big wheels. Uh, I believe these are functional air ducting. I might be wrong about that. So yeah, cool car, cool car if you like the, the W body Chevys, but um, you know, the build quality of these cars wasn't always up to spec, so I don't know if this was really the best plan. Maybe that's why they were pre-bailout GM. So why don't we get this thing inside, get it up on the lift, and see if there's anything really different going on in this car. I don't really think it's a whole lot. Maybe some, uh, I'm guessing some uprated suspension treatment. I see some yellow struts. That's a, that's a good sign. It's got Bilstein suspension. I wonder if it's adjustable or not. So yeah, let's get this thing up in the air, see what makes it tick, and then we'll get this thing out for a quick road test on the road and see what uh, see what an LS4 V8 in a front-wheel drive car like this is like. Neat. I didn't even know something like this exists. All right, guys, we got this thing up on the lift now, and it looks like just like every other GM W body car, other than maybe this uh, subframe kind of reminds me of the old North Star Cadillac subframes. Which is why when I first looked under this car, I was like, could this thing have a North Star engine? But like I was saying, those are pretty much only a Cadillac engine just for them. But yeah, the 5.3 liter, 303 horsepower in it. There's those brakes. Look like those are uh, factory red. That's not repainted, that's interesting. And this is why I don't like, this is why I don't like drilled rotors. If you look really close, Every one of those holes is plugged up with grit. You know, you really got to get in there and clean them every 15,000 miles or so. Are they just going to add more trouble than they're worth? Noise and pulsations and rapid pad wear. And yeah, just the normal W body stuff back here. Looks like uh, factory Bilstein suspension. Oh yeah, definitely Bilstein's. They've definitely been on there since they were. I was in the factory last. Interesting, we'll have to see how it handles 
with these older Bilsteins. Are they adjustable? Look, they're even adjustable. Yeah, same with the fronts. Looks like somewhat adjustable Bilstein suspension, although I don't believe those bolts are ever going to move again. Neato. Neat. Yeah. All in all, in really good shape. Really good shape for what it is. Looks like we got some recent exhaust work, some aftermarket mufflers welded in. I wonder if this had any special exhaust treatment from the factory. I would imagine. Probably just use the OE tips on the mufflers. So yeah, why don't we uh, why don't we get this thing down and get it out and go for a little drive around the block and see just what uh just what an old school pushrod V8 does in a front wheel drive sedan. All right. So initial impressions would be just like any other Grand Prix, any other of these W body cars I've driven. Other than a few little details in here, like the, the paddle shifters are kind of different. It definitely has a little lope to it. Quiet, heavily muffled. That must be those uh, aftermarket mufflers. I bet you this was supposed to have a little more grumble from the factory. tighter than a stock than a regular one. Holy shit! <laughs> Whoa! Well, the gas pedal it definitely does a little bit different than it does on the regular for the regular ones of these, the three uh, six cylinders. There was a lot of torque right there, down low too. But I guess you know a big V8 LS engine and in a relatively lightweight car like this makes sense it's gonna be a rocket ship. I wonder, like I mentioned, the build quality on these cars really wasn't all there. And not like it is nowadays with the GM cars, or any car really. So I'm kind of wonder if this thing would kind of rip itself apart in the long run. This one here is about uh, just a hair under 59,000 miles on it, so it's pretty new and fresh. Let me try, uh, try the trip, to, what do they call it, tap shift? Tap shift's a little sluggish. Kind of pointless when you have this much torque, though. I mean, you'd probably just be in any gear. And <laughs> wow, it is definitely the fastest Grand Prix I've ever driven. Tight. It is definitely tight for what it is. I hear a little left front wheel bearing noise up there. I have to make a note on the paperwork. Yeah, this thing definitely needs a wheel bearing. Doesn't affect performance at all. Wow. I just can't get over how immediate the torque is in this thing. And that was second. This is third. Still pulls really well. Fourth. And it's sluggish as to be expected in fourth. Not a quick shifter though, you know, if you're going to take the time to put paddle shifts on a car with an automatic transmission, it should be firm and quick. And there's the shift. And there's the downshift. Takes a second. If you're going to call it tap shift, it should be tap, 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 but what do you expect? Probably my guess is this is the same transmission out of the Cadillacs, those things were pretty bulletproof, and those uh, those North Star engines were pretty close to 300 horsepower. Well, it's uh, well, ah, it's enough of that. Well, I think in this car, you just let it stay and drive, and just let the transmission do what it wants to do when it wants to do it. <laughs> I mean, it seems to know what to do. Wow. <laughs> I gotta say, I'm having fun in a uh, 2000s Pontiac Grand Prix. It wasn't really a 
two words that I'd never really thought of, uh, late model Pontiac and fun. But this thing here, I'd have some fun with this car. Brakes are spot on. Even though those uh, drilled rotors are pretty dirty, need a good clean out there, uh, they're still grabbing pretty good. I'm not going to push them to the point of fade though, that's just beating on somebody else's automobile. Can't do that. Got to respect the customer's vehicle. And I want to thank you for allowing me to take this out for a drive and do the review on it. You know who you are. Yeah. It's comfy. It's fast. It handles well. It stops well. It's comfortable. Parts are pretty cheap and available for this thing. I mean, it's not some crazy rare engine, the 5.3. That's pretty much all in the pickup trucks will come with this motor, so I don't see any any hard to find parts with that. All in all, not a bad car. Going as well. <laughs> Going as well. Not bad, not bad. It's got its faults. I don't know who exactly the market for this car is. I mean, I don't see Grandma Kettle going to get groceries in a car like this, and I don't see uh, I don't see the youths wanting a Grand Prix. Maybe this is for the the old guy that wants a Corvette but has grandkids. I'd say that's what this car is for, right there. An old guy who wants something that he can merge into traffic. He can get out of a situation with it and still haul the grandkids in the back. And it looks like there's a child seat in the back just for that reason. Well, anyways, guys, not a bad automobile. I didn't know it existed till this morning, and now that I do, I have respect for the W chassis now. I do. I didn't know you could get this kind of performance out of one of these. Nice. So, anyways, guys, on that note, i got to return this to the customer. Questions, comments are very much appreciated down below as our thumbs up. And until next time, guys, keep it out of the cabbage.